The galaxy had been at war for longer than anyone could remember, an endless conflict between two colossal alien factions that dominated every corner of space. Their battles were fought with technology so advanced it seemed like magic, with weapons capable of destroying entire planets in a single strike. For them, war had become routine, a brutal cycle that consumed resources and lives, but never ended. The rest of the galaxy, those too weak to take sides, watched in horror as the two forces tore across the stars, leaving destruction in their wake. Humanity, on the other hand, had been a silent observer. Tucked away on the edges of the known universe, Earth was seen as a backwater planet, irrelevant to the grand scope of galactic politics. The major alien empires regarded humans as primitive, barely more than an evolutionary curiosity. Sure, they had some technology, but nothing that could threaten the well-established powers. For all intents and purposes, humanity was beneath their notice. That is, until they were dragged into the war. It started with a desperate plea. Faction A, cornered and weary from decades of fighting, needed reinforcements. They had depleted their own resources, lost too many soldiers, and faced annihilation if they didn't act fast. Out of sheer desperation, they extended an invitation to humanity, offering a place in their alliance. Not because they believed humans could help, but because they needed bodies to fill their ranks. They viewed Earth as expendable cannon fodder, a last-ditch effort to turn the tide. Humanity accepted, but not for the reasons faction A expected. Earth's leaders saw an opportunity, one that could change their standing in the galaxy forever. They knew they were underestimated, written off as an insignificant player in a game far beyond their level. But that's where their strength lay. No one expected anything from them. That anonymity was about to become their greatest weapon. While Faction A provided rudimentary training, humans had already been quietly studying alien technologies. Earth's top minds had spent years preparing, analyzing every scrap of data they could gather on the alien factions. They weren't planning to merely participate in the war. They were planning to win it. As the war raged on, alien forces continued to overlook humanity's growing presence. They scoffed at Earth's small fleet of ships, dismissing them as little more than an annoyance. But humanity's real weapon wasn't in their ships or soldiers. It was in their ability to think differently. Where the aliens relied on overwhelming force, humans relied on strategy. Where the aliens fought with predictable patterns, humans adapted, improvised, and struck in ways no one saw coming. The key moment came during a critical battle. Faction A's main fleet was stationed near a strategically important planet, preparing for what they thought would be a final push against their enemies. Faction B, their adversaries, was poised to deliver the killing blow. Both sides expected a long, drawn-out engagement, one that could last weeks, if not months. They believed victory would be decided by whoever could endure the longest. They couldn't have been more wrong. As the countdown to battle began, humanity made its move. Rather than sending their forces into the fray alongside Faction A's, they deployed in a way no one had anticipated. Small, unmanned drones spread out across the battlefield, silently observing, gathering data on every alien ship, every weapon system, every tactical move. They didn't engage, didn't fire a single shot. Instead, they mapped out the entire battlefield in real time, processing the information faster than any of the alien factions could comprehend. Within minutes, they had everything they needed. Weak points, blind spots, hidden vulnerabilities, all laid bare in the chaos of war. The alien forces were too focused on each other to notice the web of data being spun around them, too arrogant to consider that humanity, the weakest player in the game, could be capable of such a feat. Then came the first strike. It wasn't a massive barrage of lasers or missiles. It wasn't a bold charge into the heart of the enemy fleet. No, humanity's first strike was far subtler. Through the hacked communication systems of both factions, they planted false information. Faction A's commanders were led to believe that Faction B was preparing a secret ambush behind their lines. Faction B's leaders received similar false reports suggesting that Faction A had developed a new, devastating weapon they intended to deploy within the hour. But that was only the beginning. As the alien forces floundered, humanity launched their second strike. This time, 
They targeted critical infrastructure, power plants, communication hubs, shield generators. Using pinpoint precision, human ships delivered surgical strikes to the heart of the alien war machines. Where Faction A and Faction B had relied on brute force, humanity used intelligence and finesse. Within the first hour, alien forces were crippled. Their once mighty fleets, capable of leveling planets, were now scattered, leaderless, and vulnerable. The humans had taken control of the battlefield without ever engaging in a traditional fight. Every move had been calculated, every strike planned for maximum effect with minimum effort. And all the while, the alien factions remained clueless as to how it was happening. They couldn't comprehend that the humans they had so thoroughly dismissed could be responsible for such a coordinated attack. In their minds, it was impossible. How could a species that had only recently mastered space travel outmaneuver the most advanced civilizations in the galaxy? But that's what humanity had always done. Adapt. Learn. Survive. As the second hour began, the balance of power had already shifted. The first hour had passed, and the battle seemed to be proceeding as expected, at least from the perspective of the alien factions. They still saw the human presence as insignificant, barely registering the small contingent of Earth's forces that had taken up position on the fringes of the battlefield. Their attention remained fixed on each other, locked in what they believed would be a prolonged struggle. But behind the scenes, humanity was already at work. Their first wave of unmanned drones had done exactly what they were designed to do, gather data, confuse the enemy, and lay the groundwork for the real plan. Now, the time had come for the next phase. While the alien fleets adjusted to the false intelligence planted by the humans, humanity was quietly launching their countermeasures. The precision of their movements was unmatched, no wasted effort, no unnecessary risk. The advanced technology of the alien factions had made them complacent, their over-reliance on predictable strategies leaving them vulnerable in ways they never could have imagined. Human forces didn't fight like the aliens. They didn't charge into battle head-on relying on sheer firepower to win the day. Instead, they struck from the shadows, using calculated precision and exploiting every weakness they had uncovered in the first hour. It wasn't about overpowering the enemy. It was about outthinking them. The drones had revealed key vulnerabilities in both Faction A and Faction B's fleets, unshielded sections of ships, poorly guarded communication nodes, and critical supply routes that had been left unprotected in the chaos. These were the weak points that humanity targeted. At first, the attacks were subtle, small, seemingly inconsequential disruptions. A communication relay would suddenly go dark. A secondary power grid would flicker and fail. Ships would find themselves momentarily adrift as their systems experienced mysterious malfunctions. The alien forces barely noticed these disruptions at first, chalking them up to technical difficulties or the fog of war. But as the minutes ticked by, the disruptions grew more frequent, more severe. Entire squadrons found themselves unable to communicate with their commanders. Shield generators failed at critical moments, leaving ships exposed to enemy fire. Advanced targeting systems became unreliable, leading to costly misfires. Slowly but surely, the carefully constructed battle plans of both alien factions began to unravel. The key to humanity's success was their ability to stay one step ahead. While the alien forces struggled to adapt to the increasing chaos, humanity continued to pull the strings behind the scenes. Every move the aliens made, every attempt to regroup or retaliate, had already been anticipated and countered. The chaos in the alien ranks grew as paranoia set in. Commanders on both sides began to suspect sabotage from within. They couldn't comprehend how their highly advanced systems were failing so spectacularly, and they certainly couldn't believe that the humans could be responsible. In their arrogance, they assumed the other side must be behind the disruptions, fueling even more distrust and confusion. Humanity's real advantage, however, was not in their technology, or even their tactics. It was in their ability to adapt. The alien factions were locked into rigid battle doctrines, unable to deviate from the strategies they had been using for decades. Humanity, on the other hand, thrived on improvisation. When the situation changed, they changed with it, 
always finding new ways to exploit the weaknesses of their enemies. One by one, the key assets of both Faction A and Faction B began to fall. Power stations, once heavily defended, were now left vulnerable as alien forces scrambled to deal with the growing number of crises. Human ships, small and agile, slipped through the cracks in the alien defenses, delivering precise, crippling blows to vital infrastructure. Each strike was meticulously planned, designed to inflict maximum damage with minimal risk. By the end of the second hour, the true scale of humanity's plan was becoming clear. The alien forces, once evenly matched and poised for a long and brutal war of attrition, were now on the back foot. Their fleets were in disarray, their command structures compromised, and their resources stretched thin. And still, they didn't understand how it was happening. The human forces, though small in number, had managed to turn the tide of the battle without ever engaging in a direct confrontation. They had used the enemy's strength against them, forcing them to overcommit to defenses that no longer mattered and leaving them vulnerable in ways they hadn't anticipated. While the alien factions continued to flounder, humanity prepared for the next phase. The drones, now fully integrated into the battlefield, began feeding even more false information into the alien networks. Commanders on both sides were convinced that secret plans had been uncovered, that hidden alliances had been formed, that their enemies had access to devastating new technologies. As the second hour drew to a close, the chaos reached a breaking point. Alien ships began firing on each other, mistaking their allies for enemies in the confusion. Internal power struggles broke out among commanders, each one desperate to regain control of the situation before it was too late. And all the while, humanity watched from the sidelines, ready to deliver the final blow. With the alien factions in complete disarray, humanity was ready to escalate. They had crippled the command structure of both sides without revealing their full hand. The real attack hadn't even started yet, but the effects of the disruption were already evident. Alien ships, confused and malfunctioning, floated helplessly as their advanced technology backfired on them. For the first time, the cracks in their mighty fleets were exposed, and humanity was about to exploit those weaknesses to their fullest extent. The final stage of the plan was now in motion. Human forces, small in comparison to the vast alien armadas, were strategically positioned for a coordinated assault. There would be no grand, explosive battle, no drawn-out fight in the traditional sense. That wasn't how humans fought. They didn't have the luxury of raw firepower. What they had instead was precision and timing. Each human strike was calculated to hit at the most vulnerable points, where the aliens would least expect it. It wasn't about overpowering them. It was about outsmarting them. The humans had studied their enemy meticulously. They knew where to strike to cause the most damage with the least amount of force. Human forces launched small, tactical units to disable critical systems on the alien ships. It wasn't about destruction. It was about incapacitation. Human engineers had designed electromagnetic pulses capable of disabling the advanced alien tech, rendering their sophisticated ships useless. These EMP strikes were perfectly timed, hitting multiple key ships at once, creating a domino effect of failures across the battlefield. Within minutes, the alien factions found themselves almost entirely defenseless. Their ships were still there, but they were powerless drifting aimlessly as their weapon systems and shields went offline. Panic spread rapidly among the alien commanders. They couldn't understand how their mighty fleets had been brought down so quickly, without even a direct assault. Humanity had effectively neutralized the threat without firing a single traditional shot. Their tactics were unlike anything the aliens had seen before, and it left them reeling. Every contingency plan the aliens had was rendered useless in the face of the unexpected. The advanced weaponry they had relied on for so long was now little more than dead weight. The aliens had always believed their technological superiority made them invincible, but humanity had proven otherwise. They had turned that strength into a weakness. In the midst of this chaos, the humans remained calm and focused. Their forces moved with precision, avoiding unnecessary conflict and conserving their resources. While the alien factions were tearing each other apart, Humanity simply guided the battle to its inevitable conclusion. 
What made humanity truly dangerous wasn't just their strategy, but their ability to stay unnoticed until the right moment. The alien factions were so distracted by their own internal struggles and technological failures that they never saw the humans coming. By the time they realized what was happening, it was too late. Humanity's tactics weren't about brute force, but about psychological warfare as much as physical. By feeding misinformation, disabling key systems, and sowing doubt among the alien ranks, they had effectively dismantled two of the most powerful military forces in the galaxy without putting themselves in significant danger. It was a victory of the mind as much as it was of the battlefield. The psychological toll on the alien factions was immense. Their leaders, once confident in their unshakable superiority, now faced a reality they had never prepared for, defeat at the hands of a species they had long considered inferior. They had never accounted for the human factor, the unpredictability, the adaptability, the willingness to do what was necessary to win. As the third hour came to a close, the alien fleets were in complete ruin. Their commanders, in a desperate bid to save face, ordered full retreats, but even that was chaotic. The once formidable fleets were now broken, scattered across the battlefield with no hope of regrouping. Humanity's victory wasn't just a matter of strategy. It was a demonstration of how they could take a seemingly impossible situation and turn it to their advantage. In just a few hours, they had upended the balance of power in the galaxy. What had been expected to be a long, grueling battle had become a masterclass in strategic brilliance. The alien factions, humiliated and broken, would never be the same again. Their arrogance had been their downfall, and humanity had shown them that underestimating Earth was the greatest mistake they could have made. For humanity, this was more than just a victory in a battle. It was the beginning of something far greater. They had proven not only to the galaxy but to themselves that they could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most powerful forces in the universe and come out on top. They had shown that intelligence, adaptability, and resilience could overcome even the most advanced technologies. By the end of the third hour, the war was all but over. The alien forces were retreating, and humanity stood victorious, not through overwhelming force, but through sheer strategic brilliance. The final hours of the battle unfolded in a way that no one, especially the alien factions, could have predicted. What had started as a conflict between two advanced civilizations had turned into a complete rout, orchestrated by a species they had always considered irrelevant. But for humanity, this was the culmination of years of preparation, study, and planning. This was the moment where they would cement their place among the galaxy's most powerful forces. As the alien fleets retreated, humanity didn't chase them down. There was no need for a dramatic finish no overwhelming show of force. The battle was already over, and the alien factions knew it. Their once mighty fleets, now scattered and broken, limped away in disgrace, unable to comprehend how everything had fallen apart so quickly. But the humans had no interest in annihilation. Their goal wasn't to destroy, but to demonstrate control, and they had achieved that with precision. The aftermath of the battle left the galaxy in shock. News spread quickly. Alien races across the stars were left reeling, trying to make sense of how the humans had pulled off such an impossible victory. Humanity, once dismissed as a primitive, backwater species, had taken down two of the most powerful military forces in the galaxy in just five hours. The alien factions, humiliated and weakened, were forced to confront a new reality, one where humans were now a force to be reckoned with. But for humanity, this victory wasn't about gaining power or dominating the galaxy. It was about survival and ensuring they would never be underestimated again. Earth had always been on the fringes of galactic politics, never taken seriously by the other races. Now, they had proven not only their tactical brilliance but their capacity to adapt and overcome, no matter the odds. This was the lesson they had taught the galaxy that day. The remaining alien commanders— realizing the full extent of their defeat, reached out to humanity. They weren't looking for further conflict. They were seeking terms. The balance of power had shifted so drastically in such a short time that the old rules no longer applied. The alien factions, once proud and powerful, now sought to avoid further humiliation. They were forced to recognize humanity as equals, 
not just in battle but in the new political landscape. Humanity, for its part, accepted this new position with calm resolve. There were no celebrations, no grand declarations of victory. This wasn't about ego or pride. It was about establishing their presence in a galaxy that had long ignored them. They didn't need to boast. Their actions had already spoken louder than any words could. The galaxy had taken notice, and that was enough. As the alien fleets retreated into the distance, the humans remained vigilant, fully aware that this victory was only the beginning. They had shown their strength, but they knew that others would eventually challenge them again. The galaxy was a vast and dangerous place and while they had proven their capabilities, there would always be new threats on the horizon. But now, humanity was ready for whatever came next. They had survived their trial by fire, and in doing so, they had evolved into something far greater than anyone had ever expected. In the days following the battle, messages began to flood in from other alien races. Some were congratulatory, expressing respect for humanity's achievements, while others were more cautious wary of this new power that had so suddenly emerged. The galaxy had been shaken to its core, and the ripple effects of humanity's victory would be felt for years to come. Alliances shifted, power structures crumbled, and the once stable order of the galaxy was now in flux. For the alien factions that had been defeated, the road ahead was uncertain. Their forces were decimated, their command structures in shambles. They would spend years recovering from the losses they had suffered in just those few short hours. But more than the physical damage, it was the psychological blow that would haunt them. They had been beaten not by a superior force, but by an enemy they had considered insignificant. That kind of defeat left scars that wouldn't heal easily. But for humanity, this was just the beginning. They had always known that their path through the galaxy would be fraught with challenges. But now they had proven— to themselves and to the galaxy, that they could face those challenges head on. The victory in the war had given them not only respect but also the confidence to move forward. In the end, the battle wasn't about winning territory or resources. It was about earning a place at the table, about showing the galaxy that humanity wasn't to be ignored or dismissed. They had accomplished that in the most efficient way possible, not with brute force, but with strategy, intelligence and an unwavering commitment to outthinking their enemies. Humanity's future in the galaxy was now wide open. They had taken the first step into a larger world, and they were prepared to face whatever came next. They had learned that in the vastness of space, survival wasn't guaranteed, but with the right combination of ingenuity and determination, they could carve out a place for themselves among the stars. As the remnants of the alien fleets disappeared from view, the humans remained focused on the horizon. They knew that more battles lay ahead, more challenges to overcome. But now, they faced those challenges with the knowledge that they had already done the impossible. They had taken on the galaxy's most powerful forces and won. And in doing so, they had ensured that humanity's story in the galaxy was just beginning.